Welcome to How To and A Few. Today we're going to take a look at how to change the rear brake pads. This is a Ram 2500 heavy duty. Um, not quite sure which other ones have the same type of brake pad setup, but if you have rear uh, pads and calipers, disc brakes in the back as opposed to drum, then it's probably a pretty similar process as what you're going to see here today. So. Uh, found some brake pad material in the driveway at one point so I have a feeling these brakes didn't actually wear out but that the lining uh, might have come away from the steel backing and that one of the pads is uh, critically damaged so we're gonna go ahead and swap them out I got some of the high quality ones from a local auto parts store and uh, hopefully we won't have to change this again in a long time if ever uh, so first thing we're gonna do is jack up the car and get the wheel off Okay, first thing I'm going to do is try to see if I can find some way to pry this caliper just a little bit. In my direction to loosen the pads. I want to be careful not to damage the piston, so... All I really want to do is gain a little bit of of an opening so that the caliper will come off more easily. Alright, now we're going to loosen the caliper from the housing of the brakes. 13 millimeter, half inch. These are going to likely be really tight. We're going to go counterclockwise and they're not very tight Now normally, I would, there would be enough brake line that I could pull this caliper up and rest it on top so it's not hanging by the brake line. But this particular setup, I have almost no caliper spacing, no room with that hose. And I do believe I'm, I'm going to have to try to compress this a little bit more. Gonna mean I'm gonna have to try to get in here. Now, an easy way to do this would be just to open up the bleeder screw. You know what? That's what we're gonna do. Still have a little meat on this pad. But this one, not so much. <laughs> and the rotor is kind of scarred on the other side, but it's still relatively even. And uh, as I always say, do as I say, not as I do. 
I'm not going to turn these rotors, uh, but if you would want to do it correctly, you would uh, remove this rotor, which is quite a job. It looks like you'd have to undo these retaining washers, remove the rotor and have it turned. We're not going to do that, as I said. Chances are uh, this is going to outlast my use of the truck. Okay, so our issue now is these uh, pistons. And I'm hoping you can see that. Let's see, camera. All right. Are still quite a ways out, and I need to retract them. I'm going to do that by placing the old pad on there and using the C clamp. All right. So at this point, I'm pretty sure we are compressed far enough in. that our new pads will go on without a problem. All right, upon opening it, there are, there's one pad without a screamer and one pad with the screamer. Unfortunately, we don't know which side wears faster due to the damage pad. But we're gonna assume the inside, and the inside, in fact, is the one that had the screamer before. I'm going to put a little grease on the hardware part there and up here for what it's worth to allow the pads to slide freely. Now that's not greasing the brake pad surface or the rotor, that's greasing the area that the pad is going to slide on. Alright, the two new pads are in place. And if the pistons are compressed enough, this will slide right over. and the caliper will fit back on. It looks a little bit lopsided, so let me see what's going on. No, apparently we're in place. Last thing I'm gonna do is put just a little grease on these screws. because the brake actually is a moving part, although it doesn't move that much. Okay, both have been hand tightened, so I know that they're not gonna be stripped once I use a ratchet. That one's tight, the top one not so easy to get to with the ratchet. Believe it or not, that is now completed brake pad change. I'm going to get somebody to come help me uh, push the pedal to bleed the brakes. And then we'll be ready to put the tire back on and switch to the other side. Okay, 
I have my son as a helper. I'm going to give him the instructions to push down. And when it's down, he's going to say down. That's going to let me know that it's down. Now it's getting a little messy, so I'm going to make sure I limit where my where my brake fluid ends up. Okay, down. Down. I'm tightening it again, and I'm going to tell him up. Up. up and him saying up lets me know it's up and then I'm gonna tell him to push down again I'll open it allow the air to come out down down up up down down up up down Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Alright, so I'm getting a nice stream with no air and the fluid actually looks nice and clear. As clear as brake fluid is. So I think I have a good stream. Uh, any bad heated up brake fluid that would have been in the caliper has now been washed out just make sure that I'm tight put the dust cap back on so this side is essentially ready to go did get some brake fluid on my tools so we're gonna hose that down at the end of the process and we'll also hose behind the tire since brake fluid is caustic it will damage paint if it stays on uh, for too long and promotes rust so we're gonna hose all this down after we're finished with the job before we go on the test run but now it's time to put the tire back on essentially this side is finished Okay, so here we are on the other side. First thing we probably need to do is check out this <laughs> fishing line that apparently is stuck in the spring. <laughs> and then we'll loosen up these bolts with, with the right side wrench. And this time, listen it this way. All right, both of those are loose. See if we can't convince this caliper to come forward. Just really doesn't want to cooperate.
But I think we're loose enough. One of the bolts loose. Take a look at these pads. Still a little meat on that one. And the inside one, also still a little meat, so. Just greasing that sliding surface, top and bottom, for what it's worth. Screamer pad on the inside. By the way, both of these are still really smooth. was a tight fit. A little grease on our retaining bolts. And then I'm gonna hand start those to make sure they don't get stripped. Actually this one this one wants to go all the way in. bottom one also going all the way in hand tight how you like that they were so stubborn coming out left now is to bleed them so let me go grab my helper okay time to bleed the brakes go ahead and push down up down Up. Up. Down. Down. 
Up. Down. Down. Up. Up. Down. Down. Up. Down one more time. Down. Okay, there we go. All right, tires back on. Uh, we made sure all the lugs were tight. Took the hose and rinsed off the undercarriage on both sides by the calipers. Uh, put the tire back on. Don't know if I said that. So everything should be good to go. Uh, both sides are bled. I checked the brake fluid level. It's good. It's at the high end of the uh, high and low. So everything should be good to go. We're going to take it for a little test ride. So hopefully that helped you out if you had to change the back brake pads on your truck. Uh, this happens to be a Dodge Ram. Other trucks are similar. Other Dodge Ram models are similar. Um, the process is about the same even on cars. But uh, if that helped you out, please give me a thumbs up. Maybe share the video, take a look at our sponsors, they're the reason why videos like this are possible. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.